Erebus have just released eight new watches. It's called the Origin GMT, and I've had the task of photographing them all. Now, because of the vast quantity of these watches, I've decided to pick just two of them that visually appeal to me. And these are the ones I'm going to review as samples. However, I'll also try to show you guys a couple of the other colorways in proper outdoor lighting so you can get a gauge of what they look like. Now, being similar to the Origin, it's essentially the same looking watch, but it's got slightly different dimensions with a GMT movement, the Seiko NH34. And that's one of the points of contention I want to speak about in my gripe section of this video, alongside one more niggle that I found with my time with these watches throughout the week. Now you saw the pop-up, Erebus has sponsored this video, so I will of course leave a link in the description section. If any of these watches interest you, feel free to check them out. Now let's dive into the basic specs firstly, and then I'll share my findings. Now I measure a case diameter of 41 with a case height of 12.8. The lug to lug is 46.9 and a lug width of 20. That crown is a 6.8 mm signed screw down crown. The watch offers 200 meters of water resistance and the total weight on the bracelet size to my 18 centimeter wrist, I measure exactly 162 grams. Now on the wrist, looking at the overhead, the footprint for a 41 mm and a 47 mm lug to lug sits very nicely. The legibility is very good on the dial. The height I also measure at 12.8 has worn very well alongside with the comfort of that bracelet and the on the fly adjustable clasp. I've had no issues in wearability and even the watches with the J-style bracelet, the wearability has been very good. Dare I say, it might be just a little bit more comfortable than the H-Link. And that's because of the slightly better articulation on this bracelet, and the link sizes are slightly smaller. But either way, both styles have been very good on the wrist. Now, speaking of those bracelets, obviously the J-style or the H-Link, they come in at two different price points with two different types of watches. You've got the watches that have two-tone bezels. They come with a J-style bracelet at $559, and it's more of a premium look, whereas the H-Link bracelets come on the classic style watches, which don't feature a two-tone bezel, and it comes in at $499. Now, the bracelets taper from 20mm to 18mm, and there is a slightly improved comfort chamfer on the bottom of these bracelets, so they do wear slightly more comfortable. But in saying that, I actually found the original bracelets on the Origin more than sufficient in the area of comfort on the wrist. So a slight improvement can only be a good thing. Both bracelets do offer an on-the-fly adjustable clasp. I measure around 9mm of adjustability, which is very decent. And I believe the J-Link bracelet will also be available to be purchased with non-two-tone models, if you so desire. Nonetheless, turning my attention to the dials, they're very similar layouts to the Origin in the design language. However, you've probably noticed that the date complication has a nice framing around it. And there's also an addition of a fourth handset, being the GMT hand. Now the colors are nice and they seem to work really well. In fact, the Pepsi color is so close to my Seiko SKX, it's not funny. In my eyes anyway. Now the bezel inserts are a matte finish and they seem to be of a very high standard for the watch at this price point. I think the first thing that does catch your eye is those bezels. They look really good. There's a slightly textured matte finish. And the only difference with all these watches, the purple one does feature a stainless steel insert, which I don't mind. Now looking at the crystals, the watch offers a flat sapphire crystal with I believe six layers of AR on the underside. I've had zero issues here with all the watches and all the colorways. So I think in that department they've done very well. Now turning my attention to the bezel, it's a 24 click bi-directional bezel and the action is very good. It seems to slot into place with a reassuring positive feel. So it feels like it's been machined and designed quite well. The grip is good. But I also do have a question mark regarding this bezel, and I'll leave that for the gripe section. Now turning the watch over, you can see there's a solid case back, and behind that case back is the Seiko NH34. It's a cordless GMT. If I unscrew the crown and pull it out to the first position, you'll notice that the red GMT hand rotates when I turn the crown clockwise. It's got no effect on anything else except being able to set a different time zone somewhere in the world that you want to track. Now, on the other hand, if I turn the crown anti-clockwise while still in the first position, then you can cycle through and change the date with its quick set function. And the function and operation of these crowns and watches have all been fine. Now, looking at the loom of the watches, well, honestly, there's not much to say here about the loom because these are like torches. They're like flashlights, literally. I have to give these watches top marks in the area of loom and I've got high praise in that department because they glow and glow and as soon as you come indoors from a bright outdoor environment, you see these watches, they're like torches. 
Now saying all that, guys, what are my gripes or room for improvement of these watches? Because I've had them for a week, I've had all of them for a week, and there's really two areas that I want to touch on. And number one is that movement. It's the NH34. Now it might not be to everyone's cup of tea, because generally speaking, a Traveler's GMT such as a Miyota 9075 would have appealed to a slightly different audience. But that said, I also understand Erebus is probably trying to do two things here. Number one, keep the cost down for an affordable GMT, as well as following along the same design themes as the original Origin, which was based around the Seiko series of movements. So I get that in that department, but it would have been really nice to see a Miyota 9075 in these. But that's just me. Now my second gripe is that bezel, and I mentioned it earlier. I love the look of the bezel. I love the finishing and colorways. The action is also extremely good. It slots into each 24 indentation very nicely, very positively. And that's where I have a question mark regarding this bezel. You see, I live in Australia and I frequent places like South Australia, Adelaide, and the time zone there differs by half an hour, not a full hour. So it would have made more sense to potentially pick a 48 click bezel rather than a 24. Now a 72 click would have been even nicer, but just putting it out there for you guys, a 24 click bezel will measure different time zones around the world in hour increments, but not in half. So bear that in mind. Nonetheless, it is what it is. I suppose for an affordable and relatively practical callers GMT, it does the job sufficiently. And that's it guys. That's my time with this Origin GMT, a decent affordable divers GMT with only a few real niggles at this price point, which I mentioned in the review. So I also believe they've got pre-orders. So if you guys want one of these and you don't want to have to wait, as they say, the early bird does catch the worm. Erebus also managed to send me some strap packs which are available with these watches. I didn't wear any of the watches with the strap packs because I was, number one, I was too busy and number two, I just found the bracelets extremely comfortable and practical enough throughout the week with all the watches. So hit me up in the comments guys, let me know what you think of this fourth release from Erebus, the Origin GMT, a robust, sturdy, a very toolish looking watch without the real appeal to bling and sparkles but nicely finished off with some appealing colorways and those two-tone bezels to boot. Thanks for watching guys, be well, be safe, enjoy the watch that's currently on your wrist, and we'll see you in the next one.